Hello everyone, Parallel here, and welcome to Final Fantasy XIV. The Stormblood 4.1 patch came out a few days ago, and it brought with it a new feature called Command Missions. These are basically missions that you can take your squadron followers along with you into instanced dungeons. And uh, this actually seems to be a fairly unique feature, fairly innovative, and something I wasn't really expecting in Final Fantasy XIV. So what I'd like to do in this video is do a run-through of Wanderer's Palace, which is one of the uh, instance dungeons you can do with your followers, and kind of just take a look at the system and discuss a little bit how it works. I do also have a few tips I can provide. I have run quite a few missions here and have observed the AI and with several of the different classes and uh, how it actually works. So I can provide a few tips along those lines as well to help you complete these a little bit easier. And there is actually one thing you can do right now that makes these uh, dungeons very easy to do with your followers. I'm not quite sure if this is intended or not, um, but uh, it's worth a discussion. I can show it as we get into the dungeon. All right, but first thing, if you are curious how to access these command missions, you do need to be, uh, you know, of the rank with your uh, grand company to have access to the barracks and your squadrons, of course. I believe there is also some other prerequisites that your squadron does need to be rank two or above. And uh, when you come in here, you will see that your uh, sergeant will have a little uh, dialogue that will introduce you to the command missions and you will be able to go through that and that will unlock a new feature here where you can click on him and you will see, oh, this is on one I finished earlier. But uh, when you click on him, you will see a new option here called Command Missions. So before I jump into the actual mission, first, uh, there were a couple of other uh, neat features they added to your squadron mates, where you can now actually uh, you can now actually do um, glamour on your squad mates. So now when you click on one of your squad mates, you can go to the outfit option and say apply glamour. So this is actually a really cool additive feature, which I think is great now that they you can bring your uh, followers along with you in instance dungeons. And now you can actually customize how they look, which is really, really cool. So that's actually a really cool feature. I like this a lot. It's like even more glamour options you can... Uh, customize exactly how all of you want your followers to look. You can make a really cool looking squad and all that good stuff. So. So very cool. Um, one other thing to note also is that now that they've uh, added this feature where you can uh, have AI control of these followers in the actual missions, they added uh, these new uh, orders where you can apply these to your uh, different followers. And uh, you unlock these orders uh, as you complete the uh, command missions. So you start out with just one rank in independent. Um, and you can actually change them to be, you know, offensive, defensive, or balanced. Um, and these just kind of randomly rank up as you complete missions. Um, I haven't noticed any rhyme or rhythm to it. It just it randomly seems to unlock another rank in one of these each time you complete a command mission. Um, but since this is my tank, I will be putting her on defensive. Um, although I think, in all honesty, probably just going offensive is the easiest just to make them do even more damage. Um, but uh, my other DPS, I put on the offensive stance as well. They basically, each of the stances have some different bonuses there. As you can see, you know, offensive does more damage, defensive takes less damage, has more hit points, that type of thing. Um, so, yeah, so all those kind of new features kind of complement this new command system. Um, so now when you actually talk to your sergeant and you can go in and uh, select command missions, this is the dialogue you get. So you have a, a list of right now five different dungeons you can do. Um, and there are the different levels. It will sink your characters down to those levels. Um, and Wanderer's Palace is the highest one right now at level 50. You do have to spend some seals to go in. You do get some uh, squadron XP though. Um, honestly, the reward doesn't seem that great. That's not a ton of squadron XP compared to just the normal um, squadron missions that you do. But it is there, and you can run these, you know, as much as you want with no cooldown. So it doesn't take like, you know, 20 hours to complete like your uh, squadron mission. 
You can uh, then customize your squad and you can select uh, you know, what classes you want to bring along with you. And you do have to have the normal one tank, one healer, and two DPS. Can't really get around that. Um, from my experience, I would recommend if you want to complete these quickly, either going as a healer or a tank. Because you will find very quickly as you run these instances with your squad mates, um, they are extremely OP. They are ridiculously overpowered. They do, particularly the DPS. The DPS like put out like double or triple the damage of a normal player. So if you are one of the DP two DPS, you will be doing significantly less damage than one of these, uh, you know, one of these actual bots would be doing. Um, but if you go as a tank, that's good. You know, good to have. Uh, you know, if you want to practice being a tank, or if you want to go along as a healer. Um, both of those work fine, and then you can have your two DPS just uh, murder everything very quickly and complete the instance as fast as you can. Um, which brings me to sort of my first tip here. Among the DPS that I've found, um, some of them perform way better than others. The AI is just much better at controlling them. Um, and in particular, the caster DPS, so the Thaumaturge and the Summoner, both seem to be absolutely terrible. The AI is dumb as dirt. Um, it doesn't seem to do a good job with anything with a cast time. It moves around too much. It doesn't spend enough time actually you know, being stationary and casting. Um, it does really stupid things. It doesn't cast AoEs. Um, I've even seen the Thaumaturge using... Um, uh, like... Uh, What's the mana regen spell? Lucid Dreaming. I've seen it sit there using uh, Lucid Dreaming. Um, it's it's quite ridiculous. So I would recommend to stay away from the two caster DPS. Um, as far as the physical DPS, I, as far as I can tell, the Reigning King is the Archer. They do insane damage. They have instant cast times, and they can do it from range, so they don't have to close in on the enemy. Um, so in my experience, Archer is by far and away the top DPS. As far as the other uh, melee ones, the um, they all seem to be pretty decent. Um, the Lancer is my preferred one to pair along with the um, Archer. You could just run two Archers, honestly. They're so OP, it probably would be the best. Um, the Rogue is also pretty decent, although uh, they seem to have some buffs that they'd like to cast before they get into combat, which kind of delays them a bit. So they're a little bit slower to react than the Lancer. Um, I haven't had, uh, I don't have a monk as, I, as you can see here, so I haven't tried the monk yet, uh, or a pugilist, I guess in this case, but, um, so I'm not quite sure how well they perform, but I would, I would think they'd be right alongside the Lancer and the Rogue. So you can see here my party, I am going to tank, uh, take, a, um, Gladiator as my tank and then an Archer and a Lancer. I myself am just working on leveling up my uh, Scholar, which I think is a good match here because my Fairy can do the healing and I can just help out and direct things and not have to worry so much about the healing. So once you have your squad selected, you just select the instance you want and then you can deploy. All right, so let's check this out. Wanderer's Palace. You can see it queues up just like a normal instance. All right, so those are my tips as far as party composition. Um, there may be little tricks out there that uh, will become more obvious as people gain more experience with this. It's only been out for a few days now, but those were my general impressions. Now, there is something I do want to mention. That uh, So when you uh, zone in with your team here, you will see that uh, you now have this orders uh, button bar. So basically you can tell them to engage you can tell them to disengage, and if they're disengaged, you can tell them to re-engage. When they're toggled on to disengage, they will not attack anything, which they do seem to obey decently well while they're doing that. And then you can put them on to re-engage to have them go back into combat. And then you have your limit break. Now the limit break is actually really, really cool. I will show that on the final boss, but it's actually a unique limit break um, where it has all of your squadron do like a, uh, a dash attack into the enemy does high single target damage and uh, it's very very cool so I will show that at the end but um, all right so let's get going here and let's go ahead and put up protect and we will go through Wanderer's Palace 
So here is the trick that I was mentioning earlier, which I'm not quite sure if this was intended or what it was. I'm gonna tell them to disengage now and just kind of bypass these guys. Um, but here is the trick. So normally you would just tell them to go here and I would tell them to engage. And you know, they would do their thing. Not always the smartest in the world. I'm going to tell them to attack them. So the trick here is, if you want to actually uh, kill things a lot faster, is there seems to be some something with this engage button where it resets some cooldowns. Take it back here, you guys. Okay, they're being stupid and trying to go over there to the big Tonberry. But if you spam the engage button, You'll notice that it seems to reset the cooldowns on some of their button, on some of their abilities. Like you can see, the archer here is spamming the barrage and straighter shot. And you keep spamming that button on a selected target. It seems to really make them focus fire and reset some of their cooldowns. Okay, I'm gonna disengage, and let's leave the big Tonberry over there. So that is the trick, guys. Just spam that engage button, and it will actually make your squad... It's actually good at making them focus fire onto a single target, but it also seems to reset cooldowns on some of their abilities, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, not sure if it's a bug or... I mean, thinking about it, I'm, I'm not sure if it's a bug or just more of a design flaw, because I think... You know, the, since the AI is not particularly smart, that they wanted to have it to be more responsive, right? So they want to have it so if you tell it to engage, they can immediately, you know, use their aggro abilities, like if they're the tank, and they can immediately start applying DPS to the target when you tell them to engage and not have to wait for cooldowns. So I kind of think it was actually by design that they uh, did that, you know, that the designers actually made this reset some cooldowns. The problem is, as you can see, if I'm spamming here, they're actually murdering these enemies. I mean, if you spam the engage button, they turn into murder machines. And they will, I mean, they just focus fire down to an insane amount, the enemies. You can see they're just putting out insane amounts of DPS for you know, for this level of a dungeon. I mean, you just don't clear stuff as fast. Now, you will notice they're not particularly good at AoE, right? They do an insane amount of single target damage, but they're not particularly good at AoE. So, I don't really see that much of a benefit to trying to, like, round up, you know, multiple pulls and uh, getting them all together. Was there an oil? And you can see, I mean, as I've played some of these dungeons, realizing how much damage they're doing, I don't even, most of the time I don't even bother doing any damage myself. It's, it's paltry compared to what they're doing. I just kind of sit here and keep the enemies targeted, spam the engage button, and, you know, keep my team healed as needed, and the fairy will keep things healed if you're a scholar, so there's not too much to worry about. But yeah, I really do think it was actually kind of by design and, you know, to make this engage button more responsive, but it just seems like an unintended consequence that even if they're already engaged and you keep spamming that button, they will continue to reset their cooldowns and destroy everything in their path. And honestly, with the rate that they're killing things, there's no problem, you know, with you don't even have to worry about the big time berry, they'll never catch up to you with this amount of DPS going out. <laughs> you can see they're just spamming everything, it's kind of crazy. So I think the, uh, the, I don't know, I'm kind of curious if they'll fix this in an upcoming patch, but I'm not actually sure what they want to do. I mean, it does seem a bit overpowered, but then again, are you... The rewards for these dungeons are not really that great, so it's not like you're gaining that much by doing it. So I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious to see what uh, 
know what Square Enix will do about this. If they really think it's a bad exploit, if they're try to finish it right away, or what they're going to do. As you can see, they're destroying this boss utterly. And he's already dead. I mean, that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> they are OP as hell. Now, uh, yeah, as OP as they are, they are pretty much dumb as rocks. They are very bad at uh, getting out of AoEs on the ground. Fortunately, since they're so OP, the AoEs generally do very little, and it's usually very easy to heal through them. Um, they're also very bad at bosses that have, like, invulnerability phases. Um, it's, uh, they just, they don't seem to recognize that you kind of have to, oh yeah, there is an oil over here. Um, they don't seem to recognize invulnerability phases, so you have to do a lot of micromanagement. There are some issues with the tank. Um, if you're not spamming engage like I am, um, the tank does have this tendency to kind of run around and try to grab aggro on ads and not stay focused on the boss sometimes like you would prefer. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of faults with the AI. But um, that can all be forgiven as soon as you realize how insanely OP they are. And they can pretty much ignore a lot of the mechanics in any case. So yeah, I guess we can forgive them being dumb as rocks. Now, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, I saw a discussion on Reddit about this new feature and, uh, oh yeah, I forgot this guy's oil. Um, the, regarding how, you know, does this have the potential to, you know, replace actually running dungeons with other people? Um, now, obviously, in this current incarnation, that's obviously no. There's no way this could replace running the actual dungeons. These bots are too dumb. Uh, even with their op -ness, I don't think they'd be able to do some of the more complex dungeons or things with, like, one-hit death mechanics. They'd probably have a real hard time with those. Um, but, it does actually... You know, this is just an early implementation of this, right? It does raise the question of, you know, thinking just in the future, when if the bots were actually quite intelligent and were proved, could this potentially replace running, you know, pickup groups with randoms? Now, that is an interesting question. Um, I was kind of thinking about this. I, I, I recall recently there was, I'm trying to remember, wasn't there just recently a bot that was a bot match in Dota 2 where there was some advanced AI bot that actually defeated like a Dota 2 pro mid laner? Um, so you kind of you got to think that you know even in the not too distant future, bot AIs are going to be improving, and uh, you know thinking just thinking like even the the near term future, maybe even say like ten years from now, you could potentially have you know you could have an MMO where instead of running um, dungeons with other players, you could actually have bots. That's uh, that's an interesting kind of conundrum because I mean you know the whole idea of MMOs is having you know multiplayer experience, having lots of players, uh, you know working together and playing together. Um, but you know having bots, I mean think about it. We, and we've all had horror stories, you know running dungeons as the guy. Yeah, there he is. Um, I'll go around. Um, but you think about, you know, all the horror stories you've had with pickup groups, we've all had them. Um, that, uh, I mean, if it came down to it, if you could, if say you're going to queue up, and there was an option there where you could either pick, you know, queue with other players or queue with bots. And you're talking, you know, say 10 years down the future where the bots are actually pretty damn smart. And maybe, you know, as good as a pickup group, if not better, I mean... <laughs> pickup groups are so pathetic in many cases that um, you know I could actually see an AI being better than bots so or uh, being better than humans um, interesting question um, and I think MMOs you know I, I would hate to see that multiplayer aspect go away and I think there could be room for both right because sometimes maybe you just want to 
Um, you know, if you don't have as much time, you don't want to queue up with other people, or whatever the case might be, have that as an option. Or if you do want to, you could queue up with other people. Maybe they could just solve it with something as simple as having, you know... Kind of very clean this way. Um, something as simple as, like, having a reward, reward structure where you have, you know, a daily reward for running with humans, and then a daily reward running with bots. Maybe that would help. Oh, great. I have to wait for this guy to go all the way over there. Let's do it the quick way here. Okay, you murder bots. Kill these two things fast. Get this guy off me. I'm gonna try this. Oh crap, I forgot to pick up the two oils. I am a dumbass. Okay, bots, will you still finish killing these things? I'll kite this big one around. Uh oh. He's hurting my fairy. <laughs> Go, fairy. So, yeah, I. I I would like to see these type of features added, I think, to MMOs, um, even though there is a risk of reducing the multiplayer aspect, but I, I think there could be a balance, you know, I think they could, you know, MMO uh, designers, if they did a good job, I think they could balance it between, um, you know, incentivizing people to play with other players, and then if you just want to complete it with a bot, just to finish it daily or something like that, you know. Is there really any, you know, harm in having that as another option? Or people that just like to play solo would have that as an option. Alright, so we're here at the next boss. Um, so yeah, so it's time to put the murder machines into action here. I shouldn't have to worry about uh, killing any of the ads because these AI will kill this guy very, very quickly. I might do a bang in the other range here to stay. Now when you're spamming too, make sure you do have an enemy targeted, because if you don't, it doesn't seem to work. Um, because, yeah, they have to, the engage has to be on a target for it to actually uh, finish. And another boss down. Utterly, completely destroyed by the OP bots. Let's come here and get our uber rewards. Now these, the kind of nice thing is, is that you do get all the normal rewards you would in these dungeons. So you, you know, warlock set and whatever level 50 armor is dropping in here. So you can, uh, of course, go ahead and turn those in for um, seals. So you can get back pretty much all the seals you spend on you know, running the instance just by uh, you know turning them in for your expert deliveries. And uh, you do get, you know, some XP for doing these dungeons. Um, I would say it's not huge. I think it, uh, on my uh, scholar here, it took me maybe 10 missions around there to get a level from going from 60 to 61. So not really time efficient. Certainly won't replace, like, say, in your daily roulette uh, or your XP or leveling roulette. With which is uh, obviously has a much better bonus. Make sure these don't drop any oils because I seem to be forgetting about that. And there's the big guy. You know, the ironic thing is, is that out of all the MMOs, I think Final Fantasy XIV really has one of the best communities out there and is one of the most friendly to new players as far as, you know, running instances and dungeons. Um, so, you know, and ironically, the, uh, you know, Final Fantasy having this bot feature is probably the MMO that needs it the least uh, just because the community is generally so friendly to new players and instances. It's kind of funny, I remember 
I came back to Final Fantasy XIV recently, um, you know, after Stormblood came out. I've been playing it pretty casually since then, and um, my pickup group experience has actually been quite good. Um, it's kind of funny. I remember zoning into uh, an instance, um, you know, and I was a new player there. You know, when you zone into an instance in uh, Final Fantasy XIV, if one of the players is new, there will be a little message that says you will be getting extra rewards because one of the players is new. It doesn't say who that player is, but um, it does, you know, say that the player is new. And it's kind of funny because, you know, I, I zoned in. I was new to the instance, and, you know, somebody asked, uh, you know, who is the new player? And I immediately got you know, defensive, because I've heard this question in other MMOs, like in Blade and Soul, if someone asks that, they're only asking that for one question, because you're about to get kicked. Or like in Terra, if someone asks, who's the new player in this dungeon? If you say me, that means you're about to get kicked. That's the only reason people want to know who's the new player. Um, or that means they may just drop. I mean, if they can't kick you, they will just drop out of the group and find a new group, because they don't want to deal with the noobs. But in Final Fantasy XIV, when someone asked that question of me, I was like, oh, fine, I guess I'll answer it. So I typed in, you know, I'm new at this, um, but I mentioned I watched a video, and and immediately, you know, I was just, uh, just expecting to get kicked. I thought, well, fine, I'll queue up for another dungeon. But uh, sure, you know, sure enough, I was not, they did not kick me. Instead, the group actually started to describe, you know, some of the mechanics in the instance, and I was kind of flabbergasted at that. I was like, wow, the people are actually helping and describing the instance rather than just kicking me or leaving the group when there's a new player. I was actually very pleasantly surprised by that. Um, and that really, I think, kind of shows how good the community in Final Fantasy XIV is, particularly in dungeons. Now, it's definitely not a perfect community. I've had, uh, you know, I've had some bad experiences that, you know, everyone's had them. Um, but, I mean, but even in, in bad experiences, I'd say Final Fantasy groups are much more tolerant of, like, wipes or people dying in dungeons and trying again. Whereas, you know, every, every other MMO, if someone dies or, you know, you wipe at a boss, everyone just quits. I mean, that's it. I'm thinking World of Warcraft here. I mean, if you ever wipe on a boss, forget it. That group is gone and people are swearing at each other. But Final Fantasy is so much better. The community is so much better. So... Anyway, just a shout out to the F, you know Final Fantasy XIV community because it is a really great community, and um, I just I just thought of that because I was thinking how I, you know funny it is that this is the first MMO to have like this kind of a bot you know have, being able to play with bots rather than players, given how nice the players are in Final Fantasy XIV. All right, so we're on the last guy here. I'm gonna go ahead and send in my uh, team, and I'll do the uh, limit break. Uh, I'll probably just do it right away because we're just going to focus him down and when you're spamming the engage button that will keep all of your uh, players attacking the king rather than working on the ads and stuff and usually they will kill it fast enough where you don't have to worry about any of the ads. But uh, to start off I'm going to go ahead and just send him in and I'm going to start off with the limit break because it looks really really cool so check this out. Oh come on. See the tank's already trying to go over there and get the stupid ads. Now stop that. All right here it goes. Ready? Limit break. Look, they all go, and then... Boom! Uh-oh. What the heck? I was, like, lagging there. <laughs> I was like, the limit break was so great that it uh, crashed the server. But I'm gonna go ahead and just keep focused on the king, and keep all of my guys attacking him. Let's do that. Set in a little bit of my own DPS just for fun. And as you can see, they destroy it so quickly. There is, although I don't know why my archer is tanking here. You can see the archer, the archer is like the only DPS I've actually seen um, do as much damage to actually draw aggro off the tank. I'm lagging again, wow. I don't know if it's the servers are bad right now or what's going on. Okay, so um, so there it is, guys. Wanderer's Palace with a command mission. With my AI bot squad here. 
And that's pretty much how it works. So there it is. It's actually a very innovative feature. I'd like to see it expanded in the future, adding some more instances in here. I'd like to see them add some, maybe improve the rewards a little bit to make it a little more worth it. Um, maybe something along the line of like a daily bonus would be my kind of a recommendation. I'd love to see like, if you run one of these a day, you get some extra bonus, maybe even some, you know, tombstones or something along those lines. Um, that would be uh, pretty cool. Um, just something to make it a little bit more rewarding. I realize this is an early implementation, so hopefully it will be expanded and improved in the future. Um, but even as it is right now, it's pretty fun. You know, you get to, um, it'd be even cooler once you can, you know, glamour out all of your characters and have kind of the, the, the ideal team. Um, I'd like to see maybe some dungeons past level 50, and there's all kinds of uh, opportunity to expand this feature in the future. So, um, so yeah, I mean, there you go, guys. Just remember, if you want to make these really easy, just spam away with that engage button, and you will plow through any instance. Um, I'm, and uh, we'll see how long that lasts. Like I said, I'm not actually sure if that's considered to be a bug or a, you know, sort of an unintended consequence of trying to make the AI more responsive to your engage command. Um, so I'm very curious to see in upcoming patches what will happen. Um, so there it is, guys. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy those command missions. All right, that's all. Bye for now.